What's good everybody, welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to blend colors using two, three, or four different marker brands. Now, if you've been on my channel for a while, you know that I use a lot of different marker brands when creating any of my illustrations. Some of those brands include Prismacolor, the ever popular Copic markers, and an identical version called the Copic Chows, Winsor & Newton Pro Markers or Brush Markers, the Touch Twin Markers, the ever popular Ahuhu markers, and some of your store brands like Artist Loft, which you can get at Michaels, and Master's Touch, where you can get at Hobby Lobby. So that's just to name a few. There's a lot of other marker brands out there, but these are the ones that I have in my collection specifically, just to name a few. But if you wanna learn more about alcohol-based markers, I have a video on alcohol-based markers, and I also made another video spotlighting how to use Copic markers. So links to those videos will pop up in the card throughout the video, and there will also be links to those videos down in the description. But without further ado, let's get to this video. So what you see on my page is a bunch of organic shapes. These are meant to be drops of paint on a palette, so that's why they look like this. So throughout the video, I'm gonna show you guys how to color each of these shapes using three different color combinations while also using different marker brands to do it. So without further ado, I'm gonna zoom in on one of these shapes and then we can get started. Okay, so for this first shape, I'm gonna use a yellow color. So the brands that I'm gonna be using are Prismacolor. I'm using number 19, and that's a yellow, and I'm gonna use that as my base color. And I'm gonna use two Copic markers for this one. I'm gonna use Y35 and Y38. This is a Copic Sketch and a Copic Chow. They have the same ink, but the only difference would be the size, pretty much. But again, you can go check out that Copic video for more information on that. And um, an Ahuhu marker will be my darkest color, so I'm gonna use that to apply the darkest shades. So, let's get started. So first I'm gonna take my Prismacolor marker, and I'm gonna use this chisel end here, this big fat end. I'm gonna give this a base color. Okay, so we got our base color. Now we can apply our Y35, and this is a whole nother marker brand, so let's see what happens. You see the values are pretty much the same, but we only just started, so as we use these different marker brands, the value will get darker. Not very darker, because we're working with the yellow, and yellow itself has light values, so um, just got to consider that, but when we transition to the other colors, that's something that we'll have to keep in mind. Okay, now let's use our Y38. It's got a slightly darker value. See how it's a little bit more orange y compared to the base color? Okay, and now let's work backwards for a second. So we're gonna grab Y35 again, and we're gonna blend that in with our previous layer. And let's use number 19, our base color again, and blend that to the base. The chisel end may make it a little bit difficult to blend, but keep in mind that we're blending this base color with two or three other layers of marker. So it's not really the marker brand making it difficult to blend, it's just the layers. But again, more on that would be in my alcohol markers for beginners video. Okay, so now let's grab our Huhu marker, which is Y4. And this marker supposedly is supposed to have a darker value compared to these other yellows. So let's add that. And you see how it's a little bit darker? That means the value is decreased compared to the other yellows. So we're gonna apply that along this side because that's where the shades are gonna be. Okay, and now we can work backwards one more time and by the end of that process, we should be done coloring this paint drop. So let's grab our Y38 again. Blend that into the Ahuhu ink. Okay. 
Now let's go with our Y35. And see how we're slowly getting towards that yellow base color? That's what this Y35 does. Because if we were to just leave it at that Y38 and just blend it up with the base, then it'd be difficult. So sometimes when you're blending markers in general, you gotta focus on the value. So now we're going back to our base color and we're gonna blend it all together. And there. So we got a swift and good looking blend. So now let me take my white colored pencil and apply that along the darkest values because that's where I usually like applying it. That's really the reflected light that I like to apply. Get that in there. Now this is something you don't have to do but you know that's just me. That's just my way of completing the drawing. But yeah, so let me run down the colors that I used to color this specifically again. I used a Prismacolor marker, Canary Yellow, it's number 19. I used a Copic marker, it's uh, Y35. I used a Copic Chow marker, very similar, but it's Y38. And then a Hoo Hoo marker, this is Y4. So yeah. So now that we're done with that part, let's go to the next organic shape and try another set of colors. Okay, so now for this organic shape, I'm gonna be using an off-brand marker for the base color. This is number 179, Aqua Mint. I mean, markers like these with this kind of label, they're not hard to find, but this is just a random set of markers that I found on Amazon. Unfortunately, you can't get them individually, but that's what I have, number 179. I'm gonna be using another Copic marker. This is BG15. Another Uhuhu marker. This is PB10, turquoise green light. Another Prismacolor marker. This is Aquamarine, number 37. And then another Copic marker, which is BG78. So that's the combination of colors I'm gonna be using to color this shape. So let's get to it. So let me lay down my base color, which is 179. I might have to scratch that because it's running out of ink. But um, let's go in with our BG15. Actually, let's just now use that as the base color. Because I don't think my cheap Amazon find would be able to blend later on. Because that's what we're going to need it to do. So BG15 is now the base. Okay, now let's use our Ahuhu marker, PB10. See how the values slightly change? So, so we're just going to work slowly towards a darker value, just like we did up here. Okay. So now let's blend that together. Okay, so now let's apply our Prismacolor marker, which is number 37 again. Okay, now that we got that a little bit darker compared to the other two, let's go in with our BG78 and apply some darker shades. And I'm just gonna and I'm just gonna go over it like a few times just to build up on layers. And if you build up on layers, you tend to get a darker value compared to when you first laid this marker down or one layer. So now let's go back with our Prismacolor marker. So now we're working backwards. And we're gonna blend that too. Okay, and then our PB10. Ok, 
okay? And now the value of our base color is similar to what we just applied. So now let's go in with our base color. Again, this is BG15. And we're gonna blend that all together. Okay, so that's what we got. So let me grab my white colored pencil again. And yeah, that's what we got. So here are the colors again, right quick. BG15, Copic marker. PB10, Ahuhu marker. Aquamarine 37, Prismacolor marker and BG78 Copic marker. And with that combination, got us this. So now let's transition to the last organic shape so I can show you guys how to do it with the red. Okay, so the reds that I'm gonna use are a Winter and Newton marker. The markers I have for Winter and Newton have the old packaging. It doesn't look like this anymore, so it's gonna look a little different if you go shopping for some. But this is what it used to look like. It's a pro marker. And I'm gonna use a Copic marker. Um, R37 and another Copic marker R59 and a master's touch marker specifically found on display at Hobby Lobby and Hobby Lobby only this is number one wine red and also the touch twin markers that I brought up before they have this same labeling and number the colors might not be as identical but it's still an alternative but those are the colors that I'll be using for this organic shape and I got nothing else to say, so let's start. Okay, so I'm gonna use my Pro Marker and do what I did last time and lay down a base color first. That looks real ugly, but we got it down. Now let's go in with our next color, which is R37. Feel like the purpose of this color will be just to fix up the white spots on the edges but really it's not it's just to help us get to a darker value okay now let's blend it back in with the ink that this marker hopefully still has Okay, and now let's apply our darker color, which is this R59. See how that's a little bit darker compared to the other colors? Which means we're getting closer and closer to the darkest red. Okay, and let's apply this to a, let's apply a large amount of this over on this side, because that's where the shades are gonna be. And now we can apply our darkest red, which is this uh, Master's Touch marker. Okay, and now since we did that, we can work backwards now. So let's go back to our R59 and blend our touch marker in to that layer. Okay, let's go back in with R37 again. Okay, and then all we gotta do is uh, fix up all that, I don't know what to call that, but we're gonna fix that now because that's all we have left to do. Alright, so now that we got that down, let's use our white colored pencil again and complete it. And there we go. So now let me zoom back out so I can show you guys all the shapes that I colored today. No matter what marker brand you're using for your illustrations, the only thing that they all have in common is that they're alcohol based. So that's why since I have a large collection of markers, I mainly use each of them just for the colors. Because one marker brand might not be available in the color that I need, so I gravitate towards another brand and use A or several different markers 
just for the colors. So if you're one of those artists who has a big, huge, large collection of Copic markers, don't be afraid to gravitate towards a whole nother marker brand. And this video proves that. And speaking of which, if you liked the video or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment, subscribe if you haven't, and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. I'm